All right, recording has started. If you don't want to be recorded, please drop now. Um, as such, uh, if you stay on, you agree to be recorded. If you ask questions, your name and uh, will be available for everybody to see. Um, today, let me just minimize this as well. We're going to talk about legacy operating systems. And, and the reason I'm talking about this is because uh, one of the things that came up, you know, Let's just throw the agenda up there real quick. So the, one of the reasons why I wanted to start talking about this is because last year Microsoft um, changed um, Windows Server 2012 R2 and 2016 um, deployments, if you will, for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. In the past, it used to be you'd download the Opsman agent and you would have that reporting up there. Now we've completed a comp we've created a complete package, so you onboard that just the same as you would uh, um, Server 2019 and Server 2022. Um, it's the same engine, it's the same packages in there. Obviously, if the operating system can't do something that the newer operating systems can, we're not going to be able to have coverage there. But it gives you the same type of deployment. You don't have to have the additional agents on there um, from that aspect of it. And it sparked a lot of questions on, hey, what is Microsoft getting ready to do for other operating systems like, you know, 2008 or 2012 or uh, 2012 without the R2, um, Windows 8, Windows 7, et cetera. So right now we have a public preview of the modern unified solution, as they'd mentioned, Windows Defender for Endpoint for Windows Server 2012 R2 and 2016. Um, customers are going to ask, what about my older operating system? Um, why do competitors support this operating system and Microsoft doesn't? Um, first and foremost, there's no good way to adequately protect these machines. Um, the installation, as it says here, a security agent can only do so much. If it doesn't detect something, the weakness of the operating system is still going to come to the forefront. The bad guys are going to be able to attack those servers. Plus, as Microsoft, you know, since we are the vendor of those operating systems, if we come out with any t any level of support for them, people will read into it that we're saying that, you know, we're, we're there's assumed implication that uh, security, and we don't want to give people any type of um, assumption that we came out with an agent for it, therefore it must be secure like a, um, a, a 2016, 2019 type server when it's not. When you look at, you know, the existing capabilities that we do have for 2008 R2, 7, SP1, um, Windows 8.1, um, we currently support this with SCEP and Defender for Endpoint. Um, and when you say Defender for Endpoint, we're talking about Windows Defender for Endpoint, not Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. We will continue to provide, you know, definitions, updates for these at least until January of next year, um, which coincides with the end of our um, extended security updates and a lot of people thinking that ESU means extended support. It doesn't. It means extended security updates. Um, there's an extension for 2008 running on Azure, which we will align with. So if you ha still have the need for a, a 2008 R2 and you want to make sure that you're getting um, security updates and it's uh, supported in that fashion, put it inside of Azure. There's a lot more we can do around the, the firewalls and everything like that when it's inside of Azure to help make that a little bit more secure. From July of this year, the old SCCM 2012 will no longer support system center, system center endpoint protection on any OS. So that means if you have not moved to the current branch or a version of the current branch of SCCM, it's time to start thinking about that, especially if you're using system center endpoint protection. It, even from a system center endpoint protection current branch, it's still going to work, but we don't formally support management of Windows 7 and 2008 R2 um, from that perspective. You know, group policy, as it states there, can provide an alternate management solution. You can manage SCEP using group policy if you can't use SCCM current branch. There is no option for Windows Server 2012, Windows 8, 2008, or 2003 or earlier in the Microsoft portfolio. 
Um, as it says here, you know, when components are up to date on the Microsoft operating system, Microsoft Defender for Endpoint will support the following respective operating systems lifecycle. And it's basically saying that, um, and in most cases, especially in education, uh, most customers don't have an ESU agreement if they are running one of the older operating systems. Um, so that means that even if we come out with a patch or come out with a, a security update, you're not getting it. So your servers are still not getting those um, extended support updates. So it's time to move off of those operating systems. Um, we want to em emphasize um, to you guys that the end of life support cannot be protected like a modern operating system. No matter what our competitors say, hey, you know, you, you've probably got carbon black out there or or, or um, FireEye or somebody like that saying, hey, if you put us on here, we can protect that operating system. They can't. They have an agent, they have an EDR to it, but if something gets through, because, you know, whether you have endpoint protection or not, things are always going to get through, the operating system cannot protect itself. So, therefore, um, there's no, uh, no protection like a modern operating system. These end of life operating systems are targeted by attackers for this very reason. We're also seeing a significant risk of getting hit by rapid cyber attacks like human operated ransomware. Um, and this actually compounds, especially when you're running production workloads on older operating systems. We, we, we've talked about this before and we're gonna to continue to harp on it, but legacy OS's lack the security enhancements, the protections that are introduced into modern operating systems. This includes things like, you know, identity protection, authentication, authorization improvements, et cetera. For organizations that have older operating systems, they're also likely to also have legacy protocols and other domain functional levels for Active Directory in your environment, which poses an ex a severe risk. So if you're still running at a 2008 or a 2003 functional level, you need to, uh, to, to to move off of that functional level, you need to move to a, a, a modern operating system and to a, a, a higher functional level. If the application no longer supports or does not support moving the application to a newer system, the operating system itself is no longer supported. Um, for business continuity availability, this means dealing with the situation, you know, cannot be on uh, other top priorities. And when you really read the, into this, it's I've seen a lot of schools ready. We had one here in Long Island that got hit with uh, ransomware. And two months later, they're hiring, you know, uh, an MSSP because they don't have, and they're a smaller um, K through 12, but they're looking to hire an MSSP that does 24 by seven and all this. And, and again, I don't know if they have legacy applications running on legacy operating systems, but it's probably something that they're not thinking about when they're looking to up in their entire security to cover all this, that they need to start looking at the, the legacy applications, the legacy operating systems, because it, it just gives the attacker um, a foothold to get in. You know, we need to focus efforts on moder modernizing servers ASAP, so isolate, disable, retire, insecure systems and protocols. Um, even when you start looking at, you know, disabling, you know, different protocols, when you look at Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, a lot of people don't even utilize the threat and vulnerability management piece to that. And when you start to look at the threat and vulnerability management piece in there, it'll actually tell you, hey, there's a service that's enabled um, on this machine, or there's a service that's installed on this machine that nobody in your organization is using. So why not remove that service? Why not remove that protocol without disrupting any end users? It'll give you, you know, the ability to become more secure just by doing away with something that nobody's using anyway. But from a legacy operating system, you know, one of the things you want to do is isolate those machines, get them on their own network, move them away from all your other machines. So if somebody does attack that, they can't jump from that to another one of your machines. When you really look at the the landscape today, it's you know it's all about human operated ransomware. Um, these are some statistics that we've gotten from, you know from just uh, either threat intelligence or our Dart team. Um, hopefully, you guys remember our Dart team. Um, Chelsea had uh, had uh, uh, one of her uh, peers because Chelsea used to work for Dart. It's our basically our our 
incident response team at Microsoft for customers that can call us in for to get boots on the ground to help them out during a uh, during if they're impacted by something like ransomware or malware attack, et cetera. But over the last three months, you know, we've had you know 21 pre ransom or ransomware incidents where a researcher tracked the impacted operating systems. 57% had server 2016, 48 still had 2012 R2, um, 33% had some Windows 10 below RS3, 24% still had you know 2008, some still had Windows 7, and I'm sure there's a lot of higher education, even K through 12 in some case, that there's a Windows 7 machine still attached to the network, running inside a closet or underneath someone's desk somewhere because there's one app that this one professor still use, nobody's managing that device. Um, I, I've known some organizations out west that basically had to dispose of their Active Directory because they got hit twice from a, a, a Windows 98 machine at some point. So we're you know we're we're moving away from Windows 98, if you will, to 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 Windows 7 and watching what's going to happen there. Um, server DCs are leveraged, obviously, to spread the ransomware attack. Exfiltration of data mostly occurs on servers. You know, we're not in, you're not normally worried about the end user machine getting hit with ransomware, if you will, because the data is usually somewhere else. Or if they're moving that data off your network, they're not attacking the end user machine. They're going after your services where the large amount of data is. Encryption targets, you know, specifically high value devices, include servers. So. You know, recommendations, you know, without the extended security updates, note this is not support again. Um, security software is severely reduced impact. New vulnerabilities or old ones used in new ways. And this quickly, you know, increases your attack surface. You know, turn off the servers if they're not already uh, turned off or severely isolated. Um, use the money saved to migrate for applications. Most apps can be fixed. We have a program for that. And I'm going to talk about that in a, in a few moments. Consider migrating to Azure or another cloud service. You know, we just want to get um, those devices behind um, things like a, a, a data center that Microsoft or another one of our competitors is is securing, making sure the traffic um, is secure coming into those, um, getting punched. Uh, you know, you get one person in your environment who gets their device compromised, and now they move from that end user machine to that easily compromised server where it's a lot harder to do if it's inside of a, a cloud data center. So be confident with AppAssure. Um, this is a um, free service. Um, as long as you have 150 um, paid users or more, um, we're here to help customers troubleshoot root causes and resolve an app compatibility issues. As I had mentioned, it's also part of your license, so there's no additional cost. And of course, the customers get a direct line of communication to the Microsoft product engineers. You can see some of the things that we cover there. So, you know, Windows 10 and Windows 11, um, x86, 64 bit, and ARM, Microsoft 365 apps, Windows, Microsoft Edge, Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365 PC. So, if you have an application running on an older operating system because it needs a certain version of the browser, reach out to us. We can help you get that app off of that device so that you can upgrade that operating system, migrate to either a cloud SaaS based application or um, upgrade that OS to a more safer operating system. AppAssure again is addressing application compatibility. Um, as it says here, Microsoft is considering committed to ensuring your endpoints are protected with a modern MDE solution. You know, confident, confidently upgrade your download of Windows service and know that your apps will work. If you encounter any issues, we will help you remediate at them at no additional cost. As I said, we'll just go back one slide. Uh, down at the bottom is the URL, aka.ms forward slash AppAssure. If you have um, Premier um, support, reach out to your CSAM, your customer success account manager. They know all about the programs. They can help you kick those off. Even if you don't have Premier support, you can still go to the portal. It basically brings you to the Fast Track portal where one of the resources is um, requesting AppAssure. And I'm sorry if you hear my dog in the background. It appears that my wife decided to feed the dogs. 
um, while I'm on a, a call. So just some, you know, some talking points to, to consider, you know, server 2008 support lifecycle ended almost two years ago in January 14, 2020. So actually um, more than two years ago at this point, um, extended security updates, they're provided for three additional years. You do have to pay for it. It's rather expensive. Most times education customers are not utilizing that unless they have a, a, a direct need for it to make sure that they're completely secure and um, and getting those updates. Um, you can also see that, you know, the support, you know, people that had end of support, um, you know, also purchase ESU for four years. Um, running an endpoint detection EDR solution from any provider on an unsupported operating system can give you a false sense of security, meaning that, yes, you'll get an alert that something's happening, or you might not even get an alert that something's happening because a lot of the detections that the EDR solutions, including Microsoft, are because of the operating system. We're integrating deeply into the operating system. Um, you put an antivirus on there, if it's not malware, it's not gonna detect it, and you really need to upgrade the operating systems. Microsoft does not have an EDR solution for Server 2008. And with the end of ESU rapidly approaching, we're, we don't plan to offer one either. Um, so uh, a lot of the questions on, you know, what are you guys going to do for the legacy operating systems? It's right there. We're we're not going to support it. Um, it's time to get off of that operating system. Uh, we recommend migrating to a current version of Windows Server as soon as possible. And if you can't immediately remove them or upgrade them, then you should investigate uh, mitigations to make them less exposed, such as isolating and turning them off when not in use. Make sure you guys get all the... Uh, um, the links that, that are here as well, if you guys want to um, look deeper into it, but you can see, you know, how to, how to mitigate rapid uh, cyber attacks such as uh, WannaCry um, from the Microsoft Security blog. You can see, you know, quick wins in the first 30 days, create destruction res res uh, resistant backups, you know, immediately deploy security updates, critical ones, isolate or retire computers. And it basically gives you that 30, 90 day, you know, and beyond approach to mitigating your legacy operating systems. We've also noticed, um, you, know, you can see here, there was a global company with 40,000 plus endpoints that was compromised by ransomware, and many of their systems were taken offline. One of the things that I do wanna point out that they did not have tamper protection turned on for Defender antivirus. If you're using Microsoft Defender for endpoint, if you're using my, uh, even Windows Defender, um, as an antivirus, please make sure that you turn tamper protection uh, on this way. If somebody does become compromised, they can't just run around and turn everything off. Um, you can see many of the initial systems were targeted with down level operating systems because there's things wrong with, you know, there's just holes in those operating systems that we can't, you know, patch or fix. Um, or even if they were patched or fixed, a lot of the customers, like I said, don't have the extended support, um, or not the extended support, the extended uh, security updates, so that they're not patched, even though there might been, have been a patch out for there. Um, at this point, I'll open it up to questions to see if there's any questions. And I'm sorry if I was a buzzkill by telling you we were not gonna support legacy operating systems. Steve, does the Aperture support server operating systems? Yes, yeah. So the Aperture is basically you have an app that's running on the server operating system that's 2008, and you can't move off of that OS because the application doesn't support it or um, the the vendor's no longer in business, et cetera. Call, you know, get Aperture on the line. They'll help you migrate that. They'll find a way to um, get that to support whether it's running in virtualization or something like that um, to get that app to move to a, a more modern operating system. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we're at the top of the hour here. Um, if there's no further questions, we'll call it a day. And thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, and I'll look forward to talking to everybody in two weeks. Have a good day. Thank you.